Hello, this is Jeff Maneri, President and CEO of Grinnell Mutual. Several individuals have told me that they were unable to attend this year's annual meeting, and they asked me if I'd be willing to record my annual meeting address. I hope you enjoy this presentation. We're going to begin by talking about value and a value proposition. We're going to talk about the value provided by our employees, our member mutuals, our agents, and ultimately the value that we deliver to our policyholders. We're going to talk about these four areas because it's important. Sort of like a table. A table with just one leg is not valuable at all. A two-legged table might have some functionality. A three-legged table might actually work many other times. But in order to really provide value, you need four strong legs to support that table. Well, what have we accomplished in the last couple of years? Let's visit about that. Well, Grinnell Mutual has been an award winner in multiple cap categories for multiple years. Our co-op and internship program is nationally recognized. Vault has provided us recognition for the last three years. Elite, another national organization that ranks internship programs, has recognized us as a top company providing great internships during 2020 and 2021. Now, the Iowa Top Workplace Award is an award that started in 2011. We have been recognized for 11 straight years. We're one of only three companies that have been recognized every single year this program has been in existence. In 2021, in the large company category, we ranked second in the state, our best ranking ever. Because of our rankings and our continuous improvement, the top workplace, the USA top workplaces, recognized us in 2021. We were ranked 29th out of the 50 companies recognized in the United States. Now, Gallup has an engagement program that we participate in, and we work very hard with this. Gallup Exceptional Workplace Awards is an international award that's given to the top workplaces that use the Gallup program. We have been recognized for two straight years, 2021 and also this year in 2022. There are as less than 50 companies recognized globally for this award. Now, we're also very, very concerned about having a healthy workplace. And health matters very much at Grinnell Mutual for our employees. The American Heart Association has recognized our efforts during the last four years. And the Healthiest State Initiative Program has recognized us in the last three years. So, why is all this important? Well, we all know that there is a epidemic of employee turnover at this time. As a matter of fact, Grinnell's turnover rate alarmingly has increased and doubled since or during the last three years. Now, our turnover rate was very low, less than 4%. Now it's approximately 10%. Now, if you compare that though to the industry, which in the financial industry has turnover, annual turnover of 25 to 40 percent. So we are doing four times better than the industry, at least four times better. Still higher than we want, but we have to do things like this. We have to make sure we're taking care of our employees or they won't be here taking care of us. This is a photo that was taken during the launch of our Grinnell Compass program through the Connect system to our legacy states. And we had a little celebration and get together. And I'll tell you this, you can see from the faces of these individuals are proud of what they do. But without empowered, engaged, dedicated employees, you will not be able to provide great service. You cannot expect to have exceptional results. It just doesn't work. Employees that are disappointed and are not engaged cannot be expected to provide the service levels that we want to provide 
to our mutuals and to our agents and our policyholders. That's why it's so important to do the things that we've been doing to support our employees. In the commercial lines area, we've had an exceptional year. Our written premium grew 9.8%, far exceeding the industry average. And commercial lines premium now totals 242.3 million. Our policy count has also grown 3.3% last year. Our standard expectation is a 2% policy count growth. So we've had an exceptional year in commercial lines. Now with this, this program has been very successful starting in 2020. We grew exceptionally in 2020 as well during the pandemic. Now that seems to be very unusual. You would wonder why. Well, the reason we can tell is that our, many of our agents during the pandemic had trouble getting exceptional service from the carriers that they were using or using most exclusively. They returned home to Grinnell Mutual and found that we were providing the same service. Actually, our service levels improved during the pandemic. So with that, they started writing more business with us and have continued to do so. Once again, we really want to make it easy for our agents to do business with us. That's important to us. We want to take down barriers that make it harder for the agents to produce new business, but also to serve their customers. Now this next area might sound a little confusing at first. We're gonna talk about personal lines, the Connect program and Grinnell Compass. We're going to do that because all three of these areas are lumped together on our current product and our current project. We're gonna talk about Grinnell Compass, the product. Grinnell Compass is now our new business company. Grinnell Compass has the multivariant auto program and it has a broadband of risk profile that will stretch from our Grinnell Mutual Standard Auto, our Grinnell, Select, our Grinnell Select Elite Auto, and also our Grinnell Select Motivator Substandard Program, although we have very few policies in that program. What we'll be looking at here is a company now that's there for new business, Grinnell Compass. It'll have competitive pricing and it will provide a much easier way for our insureds and also for our agents to do business with Grinnell Mutual. Well, phase three, what was phase three? Phase three was the phase where we launched Grinnell Compass through Connect to our legacy states. Now, Grinnell Compass, we'll start with the dial there, Grinnell Compass has additional pricing points more competitive pricing, multivariant auto rating program, and new discounts. The timeline for this was approximately two years. So this was a major effort, took a lot of time. The effort by our employees, our employees put in over 136,000 hours. Our programmers, our developers, and those dedicated to this project. Now, what are some of the benefits that we're seeing? I'll just mention a couple of them. Our auto pass-through rate for new business exceeds 80%. It varies from 81 to 85%. What does this mean? It means that it's much quicker and easier for new business policies to be issued, and our underwriters can provide better service on more difficult accounts or high-level items that can aid the agents and ultimately the policyholders. Our payment pass-through rate, when our agents set up an account on a credit card billing process, 89% of the time the agent sets that up, it passes through without any intervention. This is a great benefit. This allows the customer the, an easier method of making payments. It also 
makes it less likely that a customer will look to a competitor because they're having difficulty making payments to Grinnell Mutual. Also, this program has reoccurring credit card payments, which is a must in today's environment. We've also gone through a conversion process and we tried to simplify the conversion process. What we are doing and will be doing is we will be converting our existing business, Grinnell Mutual Auto, Grinnell Select Auto, to the Connect Guidewire platform. Now those programs, the renewals will stay in those existing companies. We'll be writing new business in Grinnell Compass. But we want to make sure that we get everything on one platform. That's just a must. And we want to take advantage of that platform, even if it's renewing policies on our existing business with Grinnell Mutual and Grinnell Select. So one of the things we did, it seems very simple, but it's very important. We maintain the same policy numbers with Grinnell Mutual and Grinnell Select, even though the policies were converted to the Connect system. Now, that doesn't happen for all companies and all conversions. That will make it much easier for the agents to work with those policies. Agent navigation. Now, there's something we can really talk about. The agent ease of business will focus to have a quick navigation between producer engage, our portal, our agency portal, and the agent secure site. What does this mean? Many companies, when they've gone to the Guidewire program and the software, they convert line by line, it might be state by state, but there's no way to seamlessly move between the multiple companies that you will have. You'll still have your existing company. You know, right now, we can have a customer with Grinnell Mutual, maybe have a policy with Grinnell Select, and also a new business with Grinnell Compass. Well, instead of making the agent go through multiple portals to get to their site to take care of that customer, our producer engaged through the efforts of our staff and also by listening to our agents that ask for more and ask for some assistance, we'll be able to navigate to those various personalized policies through one portal. Now, that simplified the process and we received great and rave reviews from our agencies on this, especially those who had gone through a conversion with another company. This slide talks about the rollout to our legacy states. As you can see, at the end of 2020, 2021, excuse me, at the end of 2021, on December 23rd, we rolled out to our first legacy state, Illinois. I won't read all the states by name here for you, but you can see, we started in Illinois, and in May, we finished up with Iowa. Every state but Minnesota now has the ability to write our more competitive and our easier to use Grinnell Compass Auto product. Now for Minnesota, we've run into a slight hiccup, and it's not anything that our staff has done. We're ready to roll, but the problem is that it took a long time for the state of Minnesota to approve us. The Commerce Commission took a long time to approve our charter to write business, to write Grinnell Compass uh, in the state of Minnesota. And that is finally completed, but because of staff shortages and other problems, it took a long time. And we're seeing the same thing in getting our rates, forms, and filings approved uh, by the Insurance Department in Minnesota. As soon as that is done, we're ready to go. And we hope to have that completed by Minnesota, in Minnesota by the third quarter of 2022. This graphic shows the new business that has been written during the last 12 months in Grinnell Elite and Grinnell Standard. That's the blue bar. The gold bar shows the new business being written in Grinnell Compass. Now, just a little backstory here. During the last 24 months prior to the launch and prior to March of 2022, Grinnell Mutual has had a reduction in personal auto policy counts each and every month. Our retention rate stayed steady and did not decline. 
we still retain 93 to 95% of all renewals. What was happening is we just weren't writing enough new business to replace those that left us for another company. You can see here that once we got to the month of December, and then finally, if you take a look at the month of March, you can see this graph taking off. Our new business policy counts has increased substantially. Now, in March, it was the first month that we had a growth in new business total policy counts. So we turned that corner. March, April, and May continued growth. And June is going to be a great month as well. This shows the conversion process. It's a busy slide, but I'm just going to show, tell you a few things. We will start in July converting our Grinnell Mutual and Grinnell Select policies over to the new Guidewire platform, the, our Connect platform. As you can see, we'll be very busy. During the first six months, we'll convert approximately 85% of those policies. Now we can't get it all done in six months because many policies, you know, a small percentage of them, but we have quite a few, have an annual policy term. So it's going to take us 12 months to accomplish this. Now the good news about this, the data migration is fantastic. The data migrating from our current system to the new system is running 96, no, excuse me, 99.6%. That's phenomenal. I've been here long enough that I can recall when we converted to systems that we had to manually enter most of that data. So this will allow our staff less problems and less headaches for you as well, our agents and our policyholders. The renewal pass-through rate for the conversion is still very strong, 80 to 85%. This means less work for the underwriters to convert the policies and more time spent servicing you. So let's talk about the value that Grinnell Compass, Connect, and Personal Lines can provide to four areas. Now, I call this the quadfecta effect. I'm not a gambler, but I do follow sports, and I know what a trifecta is, so I looked it up, and there is such thing as a quadfecta, and that's when you pick four winners or the four place winners in order. Now, what does this project, Grinnell Compass, Connect, and Personal Lines, how do they provide value to our staff? Well, it makes it easier for us to do business. We looked at those pass-through rates. We'll be able to do higher level work to aid everyone in this chain. It will allow them to do the things they need to do versus maintenance and busy work and provide much better service to agents, mutuals, and also policyholders. How does it help our mutuals? Well, you might wonder about that. How does personal lines help the mutuals? Well, they package policies with, you know, the agents package policies with our mutuals and with Grinnell Mutual. And if we're not competitive in that auto program, we harm our mutuals, their ability to write business. So this helps our mutuals. How does it help our agents? It's an easier system to work with. We can do more with it provide better service, and have our staff able, able now to spend more time working on complex issues that the agency has. And naturally, how does it affect our policyholders? We talked about easier payment methods. We've talked about quicker issuance of policies, and naturally, a more competitive product. So these are the four legs of the table that are all being served. What about our reinsurance operations? Well, just like this annual meeting, we went two years, actually three years, we missed two of our mutual summits, 2020 and 2021, the mutual summit. We were so happy to hold this in-person meeting. It was the first large in-person meeting that was held at Grinnell Mutual. And we had great speakers and we talked about many of the problems that were being faced. And this happens on a daily basis at Grinnell Mutual, but here we wanted to show it to you. Now, the other thing that we've done as far as being supportive for our organization, our member mutuals, is we had a record member reinsurance recoveries. 
during 2020, 2021, and likely 2022. Our company has stood with the financial capacity to make record payments to our mutuals for the losses they have suffered. We've stood by our reinsurance contracts and delivered and provided that financial support for our member mutuals so they can go on and continue to be successful. That is very, very important, and that's what we do. So, what do we focus on? Kevin Farrell, the Vice President of our Reinsurance Organization here at Grinnell Mutual, coined a phrase shortly after taking that role. He said, our purpose is to provide the means for our members or member mutuals to be successful. And that's what the reinsurance department has done during the last two and a half years. They've been the financial backstop for our member mutuals, but we continue to work on things that we feel will allow us to provide even greater value to our member mutuals. Let's now take a look at some of the financial results for 2021. As you can see, the reinsurance operations last year had an underwriting loss of 41.3 million. Unfortunately, our direct operations had a similar result. Our underwriting losses were 37.5 million. Corporately, all in, our underwriting results was an underwriting loss of 77.4 million. Now we did have strong investment gain of 60.5 million and unrealized investment gains from the equity markets of 23.5 million. This allowed us to have a slight surplus gain of 6.6 .6 million and our year end surplus was $771.5 million. If we take a look at some of the details that support those numbers, our written premium last year was 769 million. Our earned premium, 668.5 million. With all the claims we had last year from the weather events, our loss ratio was very high, 73.6%. Our loss adjustment ratio was a little higher than normal because of all the claims we had. It was 9.8%. Our expense ratio was 28.2%, which is significantly lower than the peer companies we compete against. So we're pleased with that. But our combined ratio last year was 111.6%. And our capacity ratio was end of the year very strong, but dropped slightly and now was 0.87 to 1. And what does that mean? It means we have a dollar surplus for every 87 cents of written premium. At the uh, 2019 President's Club, I actually spoke about the Grinnell Mutual cruise ship and how we were refitting it for the future. But we also, how we needed to set a course for our destination. We needed to have a vision for the future. So here was that cruise ship cruise ship that we had. Well, we've been overhauling that old ship and that vessel, remaking Grinnell Mutual during the last five years. We're making progress with our upgrade, the Connect Guideware program, Grinnell Compass. Yeah, we're doing a lot of pretty great things. But even if you have this wonderful ship that you retrofitted, that you you know, put in flat screen TVs and have a new engine and a new hull and you put together and you made the rooms better and larger and greater. Even if you do all of that, if you fail to chart a course, well, then they say any direction will do, any port will do. All that work goes for naught unless you have direction. You need a vision. 
But before I actually visit about our new vision for the future, I want to talk about some issues that we and our industry have been facing and have faced. First of all, it gets to be retro, but the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, we're still seeing a lot of residual effects from that. Now, yes, it doesn't seem that long ago, but it was March 16th, 2020, we moved everybody to work from home status, virtually everybody, about a dozen employees, you know. And so we did that and it was successful for us, very proud of what we accomplished. But what are we seeing today? We're seeing the era of great resignations, early retirements, mass excess of employees, we have more jobs in the United States than we have workers right now. There is a battle for talent, a battle for staff. A lot of this has come. We've got to deal with the work from any location, work from anywhere, or at least a hybrid model. We'll talk about that, but we have to be able to do that today because we have employees and every company does these employees can get a job with a competitor by the snap of a finger and they don't have to relocate they don't have to have their kids change schools they don't have to move away from their neighbors their church you know they can just have one laptop sent back to their old company and pick up another one and they're ready to go so we have to deal with that today and as i said there is just a scarcity of employees right now which is also driving up wages as people are out there trying to recruit individuals. With that, so what's going on? You know, there are some good things out of this, and that's what you have to do. Take advantage of the good things and mitigate the problems. Well, the good is we are able to hire some very talented employees right now that live in locations where they're not going to move from, but they are willing to work for Grand Mission, especially some individuals with some very, very specialized knowledge. And we've been very successful on this. Many employees still want to embrace Grand Mutual's culture, even if they're working remotely. So that's been the good. The bad, we have organizations out there that have learned that Grand Mutual does a great job training employees and has some high talented employees and they're rating our staff. The staff do not have to relocate across the Midwest or across the nation. They can work from Grinnell, Iowa. So we have that juggling act to do. We have to protect our current workers and try to recruit better staff uh, to fill openings that we have. The best staff, I should say, that we can find. We've been very successful with this, but also we have lost some employees. This is the good and the bad situation that we all deal with now in the work environment with hybrid work situations. There's also a problem we're facing. There's many stress factors on our industry loss costs. We all hear too often about social inflation. And what is social inflation? We talk about social inflation. This is just a situation that people are demanding higher awards, higher verdicts, or higher payments and losses. That's just expected. You know, I can remember a time where we were looking at claims that exceeded $50,000, every single one of them. Now $50,000 doesn't seem like much. A million dollars doesn't seem to a lot to some people today. It doesn't seem like much, especially when we have a government that prints out trillions of dollars. And so everything is costing more, and that's not going to change. We're also seeing typical inflation, consumer pricing index continues to climb and set records. For property, construction cost index is up. There's inflation in construction costs. Some building material costs have dropped, but labor rates continue to rise. So it costs so much more. Replacement costs has gone up fantastic amounts uh, on buildings and property. Another term we're talking about is these nuclear judgments. What are we talking about here? There are some exceptionally high judgments being made. I think there was one approximately 300 million for a trucking accident. Now, I'm not saying that it wasn't a horrific accident, 
but there are just some unbelievably large jury awards out there, and this is going to drive up the cost of insurance. The other thing, and I'm not quite knowledgeable enough to get very deep in this, but third-party litigation funding, and that's a new thing that's arising. We haven't seen it here at Grinnell Mutual, but we have seen pieces of it. And what's happening here is there are parties, firms, legal firms and others, that actually form sort of like a mutual fund. You make an investment in that organization. And what they do, they go out and search for claimants that have a particular case that they think they could get a huge award on, maybe bad faith award, maybe an excess of limits award. And so what they do, and I'll use this example, if I had an accident and I was struck uh, by a individual that was a Grinnell Auto insured, and that individual was negligent and caused injury to me, and I would be more than happy and it'd be just to get a $500,000 award. A party would come and say, Jeff, do you really want to fight the insurance company with this? Why don't you let us deal with it for you? And we'll give you 500,000 right up front. You won't have to worry about a thing. All we ask is that you allow us to take this case, this claim to litigation. And if we get more than 500,000, that will be our money since we already paid you. And maybe they'll sweeten the pot and say, we'll increase it by 10% uh, if we actually do get more than that $500,000 in settlement from Grinnell Mutual. And what do they chase? They try to find bad faith. They try to find a reason to get excess of limit judgments. And so this is happening, and it's also driving up claim costs. Now, the ratios times three. I'm just going to mention this. And today when I record this, they're suggesting there could be another ratio coming in through Dakotas, Iowa, and down to Illinois. I hope that's not the case. But we had our ratio August 10th, 2020. Expected losses of 273 million when we're finally done. We had a pretty good year going on last year, and then guess what? December 15th, we had another ratio, 68 million estimated losses. And then May 12th of this year, a third ratio. Expected losses right now still coming in. I think it'll be over 90 million. So a ratio time three. You know, weather patterns are certainly changing. I had heard of a ratio. One hit Illinois and Ohio, I think in 2012, I believe it was, or 2013. So I knew the name. I experienced one in the 19, let's see, no. 1990s, mid 1990s, 93, 94, went through central Iowa. We just called it a straight line wind, didn't know the term. These things are not supposed to happen very often. We'll talk about that in a little bit more. But I, what I will say is the weather pattern is changing. The good news about that is we are protecting our policyholders. Collectively, our system works. We're, re, we're fulfilling our promise to our policyholders. That's the most important thing to do. That's the most important thing we do. That's the reason we exist. That's what it's all about. Now, we'll talk about how these storms are affecting us, but that's you know another discussion, later slide. Right now, we'll just focus on, we put people's lives and property back together after they suffer terrific losses. It's what we do. It's what we do best. So what are the changing expectations? Well, prior to the 2020 August ratio, our reinsurers felt that a million dollar occurrence would happen once every 75 to 100 years. They also thought that was the largest loss we could have. Well, they were wrong. They also thought a $300 million occurrence would happen once every 250 years, maybe, one model said, once every 1,250 years. But after the ratio of August 2020, $100 million currency, I think it's going to happen about once every 50 years. A $300 million currency, 
maybe once every 100 years. Do you think that changes the pricing models? Certainly does. And then after the December 2021 duration, it seems apparent that these $100 million events could happen once every 10 years. A $300 million event, maybe once every 50 years. This is quite a change. Expect expectations have changed tremendously. That means reinsurance availability and pricing is going to be going up substantially. Just in May this year, we had four windstorm events. I included the May one, it seems pretty small, 2.25 million. But take a look, May 9th, the total event for Grinnell's reinsurance losses and our direct losses is 18.2 million. The May 12th event, as I said, over 90 million. The May 28th event, 11.4 million. The total May losses that we saw from weather events to Grail Mutual, $122 million. And we're just in the throes now of the storm season. Not what we've expected, things are changing. The other things we're seeing, there's a company in Florida that writes a lot of homeowners business. They've done a merger and acquired additional risk and they're having trouble filling their reinsurance programs. That may be a trend. Also, Access was a reinsurer, a prominent reinsurer on our program. In 2022, at the end of 2021, they withdrew from our market. They no longer reinsured Grinnell Mutual. They had approximately 9% of our risk on the property side. Now, just recently, they withdrew from writing property reinsurance entirely. We're going to focus on specialty casualty markets from now on. So they've withdrawn from the market. These are two things that are very, very concerning. And they're concerning as we move forward and think about placing our reinsurance for 2023. Now, some pundits say all this information I just shared with you, they claim that the mutual industry, especially organizations like ours, are a thing of the past and can't survive the perils of our current market. Many say that our distribution model is broken. Some experts say that our industry that uses independent agents and local insurance providers can't survive and will become extinct with direct riders and online sales driving us the way of the dinosaur. But we're not your father's Oldsmobile. We're not even your brother's Oldsmobile. But sometimes to be successful, you need to sort of take a different path. Not the one that everyone else is following. I had a conversation with my two brothers who work for Fortune 500 companies, one in the finance industry and one in the food industry. Both of these organizations have stated that they're doing certain things and some of the staff and employees and even some of the leaders don't think they're great ideas, but they're doing it because everybody else is doing it. Well, these are the white boats all going a certain direction. Well, we're going to be the blue boat. Sometimes to be successful, you need to take a different path, not follow where everybody else was going. Maybe you need to stay in your course or bend a little bit and everybody else drifts a different way. And this is what we're going to do. We're not going to move away from our relationship-oriented, relationship-based customer service model. We're not going to do that. For each of our businesses and our policyholders, we're going to provide a digital assist model for both of you, but we're not going to dive down the rabbit hole of commoditization and tra transaction only focused business models. We're not going to do that. We're going to refuse to do that. 
We think customer service is still adds value. We think that being different is better. I was visiting with somebody and I said, you know, when you start moving away from the crowd, you actually become unique. And I think there is plenty of people that want the great customer service that we can provide and want to have someone that will be there to answer a question or pick up a phone when they have a problem. Because I know you do and I know I do when situations happen outside of the insurance industry. We're going to continue to focus on personalized customer service for our mutuals, our agents, and our policyholders. We are going to do that. Now, at this moment, I can't reveal Grinnell Mutual's vision for the future in detail. But I can promise you that we will continue to support our member mutuals and our independent agents. We will continue to honor our rural heritage. We will develop and provide the products and services you need to serve your policyholders along with making it easier for you to do business with us. We will establish a stronger emphasis on our commercial lines products. We'll increase our appetite for larger commercial risk with a stronger focus on farm and agribusinesses located in your communities. We will become an industry leader on these risks. That's what we're going to do. We're going to create new products for both our member mutuals and Grinnell Mutual, provide enhanced mutual and agent membership training. You can have great products, but if you don't have the ability to sell that and to sell that value and to know those products inside and out, you'll fail. We will create additional and unique values for our customers. So together, we're going to be able to deliver upon this vision. But we're not going to follow the path that everybody else is taking. You know, even a startup company, a startup company wants to be unique and different. We're not a startup. We're 113 years strong. But we'll follow our own path, our own vision, and that will make us unique. In closing, I feel that the future of our mutual industry and the concept is bright and strong. If we put our customers' interests ahead of ours, we will continue to be successful. Now, we, we must avoid the virus of prior successes. The seeds of future failures are sown by our past successes. Each of us, every one of us, must avoid the temptation of being caretakers and become builders of our own future, just like the men and women who founded our organizations over 150 years ago. We need to make sure we add value along our chain of commerce. And that is, will be done by having great employees here at Grinnell Mutual, great member mutuals with their employees, and great agents, and then making sure that all of us provide that value to our customer policyholders. With that, I want to thank you for listening to this presentation, and I thank you for everything you do to support our industry. Thank you very much, and have a great day.